Debounce and Throttle are two strategies you can introduce into your web applications to provide buttery smooth user experiences. In this video, we're going to look at Debounce and Throttle, but first let's compare and contrast the two. So Debounce is when you want to wait for a value to finish changing before updating the debounced value. Debounce waits for updates to finish before executing where Throttle will update a value, but only once for a given period of time. It's going to execute straight away, then it won't execute until the wait period is over. So what are the use cases for Debounce and Throttle? The first use case is to reduce network calls when searching, and this is by far the largest use case that you're going to come across for Debounce and Throttle. The second use case is to listen for window or resizing events, and when you want to listen to scroll events. So for example, if you had an analytics tool that captured the scroll position of users on your website, you might want to send those events, but not every time someone scrolls on the page. We're going to use Throttle to listen for scroll events, and we're going to use Debounce to reduce network calls when searching. So there's two variants that you can make. The first one is when you're updating a value, and we're going to do that with Debounce. And then the second is function executions. So you only want to execute a function so many times in a given period of time, and we're going to demo this with Throttle. So first, let's go have a look at the problem that we're trying to solve. And you can see that our API has been called one time, and that's to get these cards here. If we search for Rick, our API has now been called five times, and that's because Rick has four characters, and it's done network requests for every one of these four characters. So let's go fix this issue with Debounce. So I have my network call here on the left and I'm using React Query, but you can use any query library you like. It might even just be Axios or it might even be a GraphQL request. This is going to work no matter how you're querying your data. So what we want to do is we want to come into our source directory and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this folder hooks. And inside of hooks, I'm going to create a new file called use debounce.tsx. So we're going to be creating a debounce hook. However, you don't have to create a hook for this. You can just create a plain JavaScript function if you like. There's also some implementations in popular libraries such as Lodash. Let's start by declaring a function called use debounce. And then I'm going to export default use debounce. And I'm going to spell debounce correctly at the top here. Next, we're going to call use effect. And the first thing we're going to do in use effect is to declare a timer. So I'm going to say const timer is equal to set timeout. This needs to be lowercase. A use debounce hook is going to take two parameters. The first one is a value, and then the second one is a delay. So in our timeout, we just want to wait for our delay, or we're going to say 500. And this is going to be 500 milliseconds. Because we're using TypeScript here, I can just type my value as T and then I'll make use debounce a generic. And then my delay here is going to be a number. And we can also make delay optional because we're setting a default here of 500 milliseconds. Inside of our timeout, we want to set a value. So I'm gonna say const equals use state. And I'm going to default this to value and I'm going to set the type to our generic type. I'm going to call this debounced value and set debounced value. And then inside of our timer here, I'm simply going to set a debounced value with our value. So the last thing to do is to clear our timer when our component unmounts. So from use effect, we can return a function and our function is going to call clear timeout. And then we're going to pass in our timer. The last thing we need to do is to pass a dependency array into use effect. And I'm going to pass in value and delay. So what are we doing here? We're going to declare a function called use debounce that takes a value and a delay. And then we have use effect that is going to listen to our value. And every time our value changes, we're going to set a timer and then after that time has expired, we're going to update our debounced value. And then when we unmount, we're going to clear our timer. So let's go have a look at this in practice. If we come back over to our search form here, 
You can see in our query, we're listening for name, and then we're going to pass the name into our fetch values. But instead of just passing the name in like this, we just want to pass in a debounced value. So I'm going to say const debounced value is equal to use debounce. And then I'm going to pass in my name and I'm going to update the name every 500 milliseconds. Oh, I can make it five seconds here to make it really obvious what's happened. And then let's swap out our name for debounced value. And then on the UI, I'm just going to render out our debounced value so we can see how it lags behind our name here. So I'm going to search for Rick and you can see our name is currently Rick. We're going to wait for five seconds and then we're going to update the debounced value to Rick. And you can see that our API was only called two times now. So one for the initial load and then one for the search. Let's change the debounce value here to 500 milliseconds and 500 milliseconds is a pretty standard time to debounce. So let's search for Rick and you can see that the API was now only called two times again. So if we search really slowly for something like Gary, then we're still going to call the API a bunch of times. If this is an issue for you, you can update the debounce value to say something like a second. However, I find 500 milliseconds is good for most typing speeds. To come over to the throttle example, you can see that we have a long page here and we have the number of calls for our handle scroll event here. So every time we call this handle scroll, we're going to update set calls and then we have a button to reset our calls and then we just have the position that we are on the page. So if we scroll to the very bottom, you can see that we've now called this function here 1500 times. And then if we scroll to the very top, we've called it nearly 3000 times. So we don't want to send our scroll position updates 3000 times just for a user to scroll to the bottom and then scroll to the top again. We only want to call it every say one second or so. So to do this, we're going to use throttle. And remember I mentioned that there's two different ways you can do this. One is to update a value like we are with debounce. And then the second is to execute a function. So in this example, we're going to use throttle to execute this handle scroll function for us. Let's come back over to our hooks folder and I'm going to create a new hook called use throttle.tsx. I'm going to say function use throttle. And then I'm going to export default use throttle. Next, I'm going to say const last run is equal to use ref. I'm using ref because we need a mutable value here. And then I'm going to say date dot now. And this is just going to default to date dot now. Next, I'm going to return a function. And I'm going to say if date dot now minus last run dot current. And we just need dot current because we're using a ref here. It's greater than or equal to limit. And we need to pass in a limit. And that's going to be a number. Before the limit, we actually need a callback. And this is going to be the function that we want to run. So I'm just going to type this as a function that returns void. So if date.now minus last run is greater than or equal to our limit. So if we set this limit here to say one second, if date.now minus last run is greater than or equal to our one second mark, then we are good to fire the function again. So we're going to fire callback and then we're going to set last run dot current. It's equal to date dot now. So then we're going to start the timer again. So that's all we need for use throttle. Let's come back to our throttle example and we can wrap our handle scroll here in use throttle. And then we also need to pass in a limit here. So let me pass in something like 2000 to make this really obvious. And then I'm going to start scrolling and you can see straight away throttle gets called and then throttle isn't going to get called now for 2000 seconds. So if we wait two seconds and scroll again, straight away, we get another call. 
And then if we scroll a bunch more times, you can see that it's only ever going to update every two seconds, even though we keep scrolling. Let's change this to something like 1000. We can reset our calls here and then we can scroll to the bottom and you can see that we only get four calls now instead of 1500 to scroll to the bottom. And then scrolling to the top again is only another four calls. So when should you use debounce and when should you use throttle? In most use cases, you're going to use debounce and that's because the most popular use case for these strategies is to reduce network calls when you're searching. However, if you need the event to fire and then only fire again if it happens outside of a given window, say one second, then you're going to want to use throttle. And throttle is popular for listening to events, such as resizing and scroll events. So that is how you can use debounce and throttle to make your applications feel buttery smooth and reduce your network requests. If you like this video, please make sure you leave a thumbs up and subscribe so you get notified every time I release a video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.